Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So Monitors at Home Care um, is an ASAP or Aging Services Access Point and we're one of uh, 27 elder service agencies across Massachusetts. Elder Services funds us primarily. Uh, we are uh, actually what we do is we administer the state home care programs and so the state home care programs all um, include some kinds of homemaking services if an elder or anyone over the age of 60 uh, needs any kinds of um, help with their activities of daily living and that includes your bathing your dressing uh, maybe transferring from a chair to um, standing position you have and you need help with all of those things you might need help uh, feeding yourself you might need help um, you can't get groceries you can't leave your house you can't go shopping you don't have family members all of those things are really helpful mm -hmm. and the and EOEA recognizes that you can't stay home if you can't do those services yourself so they put money out across the state to help with all of that so you can be eligible for uh, someone to come in and help you home with homemaking, clean up your house a little bit, with cooking. Uh, somebody can come in and bathe you, help you get dressed. Um, they might do your laundry because your laundry is downstairs and you can't carry the laundry basket and walk downstairs. There's a whole list of things that you might be eligible for. So that, those are the roles really that um, the ASAPs really help with. They also all of the staff at the ASAPs are all uh, either licensed social workers or nurses. So all of these people go into your home. Um, they could help you out. They case manage. They might advocate for you for different things that you might need uh, for services. He talked about, um, Arthur talked about geriatric care managers. They, um, the ASAPs use their care their case managers very similar um, and the services are not as costly as a geriatric uh, care manager uh, so the have the roles we have nurses who go into the nursing homes actually and help people we have um, ombudsmen if you're in a nursing home the ombudsman program every nursing home has in in the state of Massachusetts has an ombudsman and that person is an advocate for the patient and for their family members. So you can ask to see the ombudsman in the nursing home if you have any issues with the nursing home. Uh, what are some of the other things? Um, so there's, we there's have family meetings, meetings yeah. possibly, uh, with family members, because we know lots of families have siblings that argue about what they think is best for the parents uh, or the elder, and so we will also go in and have family meetings and help people come to agreement about what's really in the best interests of the parents. I was just going to say, can you talk to them once again about the home care that can be provided right through through elder services as, as opposed to even the frail elder waiver or yeah. any of that? that just, so this is a really important thing that many people aren't aware of. There's a big difference between the VNAs that go in to the home and actually bill your insurance company. And the VNAs will go in as long as there's a medical necessity, a medical need. Skilled care, S need for yeah, skilled, skilled care. care. And otherwise, that care ends and it uh, usually only lasts a short time. Then you really are getting better, but you're still not able to take care of yourself. You really do need help taking care of yourself. So that's where the ASAPs come in. Actually, you need to call. They um, are experts, really, in all of the um, services in, in given areas for elders. And they actually will send somebody out, do an assessment, will send a nurse out or a case manager. They go into the home. They do an assessment. They might look at your income. Uh, they look at your service need. 
How, what can you do for yourself? What can't you do for yourself? What do you need help with? And then they set a plan up. And then um, the might start with services. You might start with um, just laundry, you know, help, meals on wheels. We might, might put somebody into an adult day health program to get them out of the house and get them some social contact. I mean, there's a lot of things we can do to figure out what your care plan is best, you know, what's best for you. Everybody's plan is a little different. And, uh, and can you give them a sense of what that would cost and whether any asset required? I know many yep. people assume they're, that they don't want to, that they're not talking to you because there are asset requirements right. regarding. We that. have no asset requirements. The state um, doesn't look at your assets. What they look at is your income, monthly income. If you own property and you get rental income from that, that's considered income. That's not. You, they don't. They don't look at your car, they don't look at your house, the value of your house, they don't look at the value of your rental property. All they're looking at is what comes in to you every month. So they'll look at your social security, your rental income if you get that, um, any pensions you have. So fees are based on whatever your income level is. So it's a percentage of whatever that income is. So some people might pay nothing. Some people might pay $7 a month for services. Some people may pay $70 a month for services. And if you're 100% around, if you're 100% at income, that is quite a bit. It's over $50,000. So you could still be eligible for services and still use the nursing and the case managers but you'll be paying 100% of the cost. That cost is at a reduced rate than if you were paying privately because we have contracts with a, a lot of the home care companies that do the services and they will send them out to your home at our cost, not at yours if you were to um, negotiate privately with them. So it's, it's worth it even if you're paying 100%. And you get a case manager. You get somebody who really knows what's happening, what other service is available, what, what's going on. Um, they will check on you in the hospital. If you go into the hospital, it's good to give us a call if you do go into the hospital because we need to know that. That's another, you know, we need to stop services in your home and make sure that we pick you up again as soon as you're discharged. So those are all services for the ASAPs. Thank you. And we're going to take questions at the end. But I think, once again, the, the, like with the geriatric care managers, the goal of the exercise is to know about those services ahead of time. The best thing you can do for yourselves as elders living in this community, Montachusett is close by. Your offices are right up. Is, aren't you, are you in, where are you? We're in uh, Lemonster, Mass. You're right Mass. in Lemonster, yeah. right? But we travel 21 communities all in North Central Mass. Right. Yep. So, so find out what kinds of services are available before there's an emergency. I think that's kind of the most, that's kind of the, mo the important message here. So who pays? Um, if you're at home, as we were discussing, if you, are, if you um, were discharged from the hospital, uh, and the VNA says that you need skilled care when you're at home, then Medicare is going to be paying for that. Uh, Medicare can actually pay for that indefinitely. We're going to talk about that in a little while. Uh, if you're not on Medicare, um, then, then you, in order to qualify for MassHealth, it's very hard, right? You need to have very low income in order to qualify for MassHealth. In this case, Frank and Mary wouldn't qualify because as a couple, they need to have income of less than $1,311. Um, as, as was mentioned, there are substantial amounts of home care that you can get through uh, Bay Path, or, or excuse me, through Bay Path, um, through Montachusett, through the ASAP. To the extent that you want more services than that, you're going to need to try to find some folks. Often folks will look around to family and friends or to outsiders. Because that happens so often, I just want to talk about that for a while. Employment Law 101. So. Anybody who is working for you in your home whom you are paying is an employee of yours, right? They can't co qualify as a contractor unless they are, servicing, they are regularly servicing at least five people. Um, they're an employee, which means if you think, you know, you're, you're, you, and people do this, right? You can be paying the lady down the street, right? You can be paying any number of folks to do stuff, but understand that as far as the federal government is concerned, you're supposed to be filing a notice of that with the IRS, you're supposed to be withholding income, you're supposed to be withholding FICA, they're supposed to be on workman's comp, 
and on unemployment insurance. If there's a problem, if there's no problem, well, of course, there's no problem. People always say, well, what happens if I don't report? And the, my answer is, well, of course, if you don't get caught, <laughs> nothing at all. But if there's a problem, if somebody falls in your home, right, that's a workman's comp issue, right? So, so you want to be sensitive to that. Now, once again, the advantage of, of instead looking at home care agencies, and I know uh, we had Shelby Marshall uh, at, at the last presentation talking about the fact that home care agencies will typically, while you want to check on them, will, everybody will be licensed and insured and all that jazz, right? Um, the, uh, the advantage of dealing through Monachusett, right? Uh, well, you heard some of them. First of all, the services that you get may be free, right? Secondly, even if you are over their income limits, which are substantial, for a couple it really is about $50,000 before you end up having to pay 100% of the home care. Below that, you're paying a, a, a copay and, and, and Montachusett is paying. But even if you're over those numbers, if you're hiring a home care person through Montachusett, the rates are going to be lower and they're going to be vetted. Montachusett deals, they are the premier employer of home care agencies and home care individuals in this whole area. They're going to know um, the reputation and the competence of the people that you're talking about. So if Frank needs somebody, right, and he's not just hiring somebody from down the street, right, that's who he wants to talk to. Um, uh, caregiver contracts, I'm going to, excuse me, one, employee law, employment law 102, right, these are kinds of the issues you need to be aware of. Employee, employee injuries, theft. This happens. I mean, I, once again, this is all I do, so these are the kinds of stories I hear about. Certainly, I've had people who I think, you know, I do a lot of, deal with a lot of Alzheimer's people. Sometimes they think things are stolen, and maybe they were, maybe they weren't. But, the, but I've also seen a lot of really legitimate cases of this, right, and of other kinds of problems at home. That's why to be doing this informally is just dangerous. 